Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's uh, meeting of the Committee of Adjustments. This meeting is to consider applications for minor variance and consent held under the authority of the Planning Act of Ontario. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review the proposal that is before us, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the committee, after consultation with the secretary treasurer, will set a new hearing date. No further notice will be provided until there are unless there are changes to the application. In order for us to conduct an effective and efficient hearing, we have adopted the following process. First, the owner and the authorized agent will be given the opportunity, if so desired, to briefly explain to us the basis of their application and answer any questions that may arise out of the hearing. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for, these, for this presentation. You need to state your name, full address for the record. Any materials submitted to the committee for viewing will remain the property of this committee. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All persons attending the hearing who wish to support or oppose the application must also state their name and address for the record. A maximum of five minutes will be provided to make their presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chairperson of the committee. Any submissions beyond five minutes will also be at the discretion of the committee. If there are several speakers sharing the same view, please select a spokesperson to represent the group and their opinion. We do wish to hear your views. However, covering the same points will not advance your case. The owner and agent will be provided further five minutes to respond to comments made by any interested parties, answer questions from the committee members. And if the owner or agent has any concerns found in the staff reports, particularly with any proposed conditions, that will be the time and opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision. This will mark the end of all discussions. Once the committee makes an oral decision, any person desiring a, a copy must file with the secretary treasurer at this meeting a written request for notice of the decision. A green sheet is provided for this purpose in the back of the room. Please note that you must make a written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the Ontario Municipal Board for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variances, 15 for consent applications to the applicant, the owner, agent, and any other person who has filed such a written request for notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this Ontario to the Ontario Municipal Board. The last day to appeal the decision to the Ontario Municipal Board will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding, and the secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant through written correspondence. Uh, members of the public attending this committee uh, meeting are to be courteous to and respectful to the members of the committee, town staff, and other people in the attendance tonight. Tonight's meeting will be live streamed and available for future viewing on the town's live stream page at Oakville ca slash live. We do ask that you turn your cellular phones and pages to at least silent, uh, as they do tend to interfere with the audio system. Thank you. Thank you very much for reading the preamble. Uh, no regrets this evening. Everyone is present. Is there anyone here that has a declaration of any pecuniary interest? Seeing none. Okay, we'll record that. Uh, is there anyone here this evening that requests a deferral or a withdrawal of an application? Deferral or withdrawal? Yes, sir. Name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is David Capper with Glen Schnarr and Associates. For the record, our address is 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle, Suite 700, Mississauga, Ontario, L5R3K6. Here on behalf of uh, Pauline and Dennis Duan, uh, the property owners at 114 Balsam Drive, uh, we received a request from staff uh, for more time to consider the materials that have been submitted with the application and uh, they'd requested that we seek a two-week deferral, which we're happy to do. Uh, so that would uh, be seeking a deferral for the first two items on the agenda, those being B17-08 and CAV-166. Okay, thank you. Is anyone here this evening that has an interest in both consent application B17-08 and uh, minor variance application CAVA-166-2017, both dealing with 114 Balsam Drive? Okay, uh, members, any questions? All those in support of the deferral request? Okay, sir, I think you're on the agenda for December 5th. Thank you, sir. Uh, there might be some paperwork that you get 
need to get done and there's a deadline so consult with our secretary treasurer thank you sir thank you any anyone else oh sorry just before did you have a through you mr chairman the town also has a secondary deferral request mr capper beat me to the punch for the first one but the town is also requesting a deferral on another item this evening okay uh, do you want to deal with it now or after we hear this deferral request? We can deal with the, uh, the other okay. applicants. Thank you. Good evening, yes, Mr. Sir, good Chair. Evening. Uh, my name is David McKay. I'm with MHBC Planning. I represent uh, Bronte Property Holdings, CAVA 197-2017. Uh, staff have requested a deferral uh, to deal with wording of one of the variances, and uh, they have uh, we have agreed to that deferral. Uh, to December 5th and uh, be happy if I know there were some concerns raised by residents uh, in the correspondence so I'd be happy if they're here to speak with them afterwards uh, to s talk them through the application as well so that will give us time to deal with that okay that's a good Thank idea you. let's just see is anyone here this evening has an interest in the application CAVA 197 2017 at 2441 Lakeshore Road West okay so this matter is uh, requested to be deferred uh, anyone else? Just the two? Okay. So uh, well, I can just, meet with them afterwards. Yes. Uh, members, any questions? Satisfied with the deferral request? All in support? Okay. We're deferred. I think you two are on the agenda for December 5th. That's why I understand. Uh, new notice will need, need to be posted, I guess. Yes. And uh, there are a couple of hands, and your suggestion is a good one. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, oh, there's more. Jeez. This Might is shaping up to be a great night. Your agenda very late tonight. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, just for those that don't know, there's a deferral fee associated with a deferral. Fair enough. So keep them coming. Mr. Yes. Chair, members of committee, my, <laughs> my name is TJ Secura from with Design Plan Services. I'm here on behalf of David Small Design tonight for item number 5, CAVA 195 at 247 Cardinal Drive here to, yes. to request a deferral. We're aware that staff have concerns with this application okay. and have recommended uh, refusal. We would like the opportunity to discuss that report with staff and see if there are any potential revisions that can be made to the application that may satisfy their concerns. Okay, members, uh, sorry, just before, is anyone here that has an interest in application CAVA 195 2017 at 247 Cardinal Drive? Okay, members, you're satisfied with the deferral request? Any questions? Seeing none, all those in support? Okay, your application be deferred. Uh, they beat you to the uh, punch on the dates. I think you're looking at December 19th. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, December 19th. The deferral fee would be yes, and the deferral fee, as you heard. So I think we take credit cards. So, yes. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yes. Through you, Mr. Chairman, um, just to clarify for the last item on Cardinal. Uh, Pending any of those discussions with staff, um, the December 19th date might be premature, uh, depending on the opportunity to have revised plans. So if, if there were any residents or the applicant dependent on that particular day, just to allow for some flexibility in the event that further discussions with staff uh, are required. All right. Well, you, you heard, but I think you, you can work together and make it happen. So I'm happy to have those discussions with staff. If the changes are not done in time to make it for the notice provision for the December 19th date, would we have to come back on the 19th no. to request a further deferral? No. Or that will no, be a staff it's, scheduling it's not issue? preemptory. We suggest that that's the date that's available. So if you make it happen, you're on the 19th. If not, you're on the next available date. Sounds good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Did you still have a question, Carmen? No, through you, Mr. Chairman, the two items that staff have requested deferral of, as noted in our report, are related to the applications at 114 Balsam and at 2441 Lakeshore Road. Both applicants uh, were present this evening and got beat me to the punch in requesting okay. those deferrals in terms of acknowledgement that these are staff requested deferrals. Okay, perfect. Uh, I guess uh, they know who to consult and uh, get this matter on, the, on our docket as soon as possible. Okay, anyone else? All right, we'll start off with application CABA 191-2017. This is at the application of 480 Chamberlain Lane. Good evening, sir. Can we have your name and address for the record? Yes, yeah, Christian Fortune, 550 Spears Road. Multiple. I'm authorized agent for uh, Pina and Angelo Latassa for 480. You need to speak in the microphone. 
sorry, uh, Christian Fortune, uh, 550 Spears Road, Oakville, uh, authorized agent for uh, Pina and Angelo Latassa. Anyone here this evening that has an interest in application uh, CAVA 191-2017 at 480 Chamberlain Lane? No, this is a, a matter that's recommended for approval by staff. Uh, is there anything you wish to add to the application, sir? No. Members, you've uh, seen the application. You studied uh, the report. Any questions, items of clarification? Okay, see none. I guess we can take this matter to committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Yes, Mr. Hardcast. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, having reviewed the materials, uh, undertaken my site visit, and read the staff report, I'm satisfied that the requested uh, variance is conformed to the tests of the Act, and I'll put forward a motion of approval subject to two conditions, the first being that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated October 18th, 2017 as submitted, the second being that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Um, I would note that there were no residents in attendance uh, or deputations made with respect to this matter. Okay, thank you. Discussion recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? No one opposed your application being approved, sir. Thank you. Okay, so we're doing all the lanes first. CAVA 192-2017 at 1198 Cynthia Lane. Is that the one? Yes. You have to come down, sir. I know. You got to come down. We can't hear you from that far. Sorry, my agency is a little bit late. Late. Okay. okay. So we About can stand your application down. Uh, no. Or you want to? You want to defer your application? Okay, we'll be uh, here like in ten minutes. Yes, okay. okay for so why don't you raise your hand when your agent comes in? Okay, yeah, sure. And then we'll deal with your application at that time. Okay, sure. Okay, I really perfect. appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Anyone here for that application? CAVA 192 2017. Okay. So we'll we'll get to you, sir, as soon as your agent comes in. Okay. Uh, so we'll hold this down. Application uh, CAVA 193 2017 to 118 Tavistock Square. I guess we're doing the lanes, the squares, the roads, and the drives. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, my name is David Capper with Glenn Schnarr and Associates. Our municipal address is 10 Kingsbridge Garden Circle, Suite 700, Mississauga, Ontario, five, sorry, L5R3K6. And we're here on behalf of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sevagian for the property at 118 Tavistock Drive. Okay. Thank you, sir. Does anyone here this evening have an interest in application CAVA 193-2017 on 118th Havistock Square? Uh, this is another uh, application that's recommended for approval. Our procedural bylaw allows us to dispose of or dispense with a full public meeting. Any questions? I have a clarification, members. Is there anything you wish to add to the application? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Unless there's any questions of the committee, I'm, I have nothing further to add. Okay, well, we'll proceed to a recommendation. Who would like to move the recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Teleski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'm happy to move approval of this application. Uh, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. Note that there's no public submissions made, and I'm satisfied that the housing design being requested, the form of a two-story house with a single-story garage attachment is uh, consistent with the development on the street. I'd make that uh, approval subject to two conditions, that development proceed in general accordance with the drawings provided, and that a building permit issue within two years. Thank you, sir. Uh, also note that there's no letters of opposition and no letters I want to hear to speak to the matter other than the agent. So uh, recommendations to approve subject to those two conditions. Discussion on recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? No one opposed your application being approved, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, application CAVA 194-2017 at 1013 Westdale Road. Jason Heater, Hicks Design Studio, 295 Robinson Street, Oakville, Ontario. Okay, thank you. So uh, we have, uh, we've studied your application, sir. We've done our site visits and all that, and I think staff are pretty well satisfied uh, 
on five out of the six variances, Correct. and yep. and uh, we'll need a presentation and perhaps focus mostly on variance number six, I guess. Okay. The the height. Yep. Fair enough. Um, we've actually had a bit of a discussion back and forth uh, this afternoon with planning, and would like uh, through you, if we can, to uh, make a minor s um, alteration to the grades and elevation of the home. Uh, I don't know if that's going to come up at all. Yeah, it will. Well, uh, if there's no leaf game on, they should be uh, <laughs> listening to this. Perfect. Thank you. I'm just trying to represent the easiest way what we've sort of done. The purple lines that you see on there are representative of the application that's in front of you currently. Um, We've, this is a 10.21 meter height? That's correct, yep. So what we've done is um, done a minor slope adjustment to these two front gables, which are the items that sort of dictate the height. Um, we took it from 12.12 down to a 12.11, and then we were also, through a bit of a cut fill grading exercise, able to drop the finished floor. So that resulted in a net height reduction of 0.42 meters. Um, so it brings the variance from 10.21 to 9.79. And what it also achieves is, um, from the perspective of the actual visible height of the building um, at the entry grade, we've been able to bring that down to the nine meter mark, which would uh, meet the bylaw requirement. So are you at nine meters now? So no, the, the overall height, the total overall height is 9.79 meters. Uh, the original request was for 10.21, 10, 10. 10. 10. yes. correct. And where's the nine meter height? Did you show it on that? Yeah, so it's from here. Let me just get a pen. Where would the nine meters take you? The nine meters takes me from this line right here, the current ridge, to the front grade of the house. So it's really the visible height of the house. So which elements exceed the nine meters? The, the ones in purple? That's the 10.21, uh, right? That's the 10.21. So the, the items in purple are the reduction in height. Yeah, so the problem with this oh, site... so the actual height is uh, 9 meters, but because of the grade and how you measure it, yeah, it's 9.79. Yeah, and I'll put this up. This might help a little bit as well. Yeah, this don't, was I a remember that, photo yeah. taken. This, this is a sort of rather rare site as it's, a, it's an upside-down bowl. So it, mm. it's a center table and with, floor, uh, with sloping sides on all four areas. So the actual siting of the current home sits up on this sort of pedestal. And the average grade down at the street is in the neighborhood of uh, 1.2 meters below. Um, so that sort of exacerbates the height issue. And so right. we sort of realized Se that um, and have done our best to visually reduce the house uh, based on these adjustments. Okay. Any questions? Yes. I guess I just want to ask, since the discussion went on with planning, is now planning supportive of variant six or? Not. That was going to be my question, but... Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, forget that I asked No, that. that's okay. No. <laughs> you can take credit for this. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the committee. Um, what the applicant is, is uh, trying to accomplish by bringing this forward to you this evening is, a, is an amended application for variant 6 to reduce the requested height from 10.21 down to 9.79 meters. The effect of the change that has been discussed and what's being shown to you here now is that as you've uh, indicated, the, the nature of the grade of the property contributed uh, to uh, an increase in height, but also the physical height of the structure further exacerbated that condition, which is what staff alluded to in our comments. We believe that by bringing the physical height of the building down to nine meters and the sensitivity provided by the single story garage provides for that sensitivity in transition to the dwellings that are further west of this property and are sensitive to those changes in grades. So in review of this, it's staff's opinion that the, the revised submission as it's before you today addresses the comments that we had provided in our staff report and we have no objection to the revised variance. Okay, uh, just before we take this matter to committee, is anyone here that has an interest in application CAVA 194 2017 at 1013 West Dell Road? Just as revised. Okay, so your request, sir, is to revise variance number six uh, for 9.79 variance? That's correct. So we'll take that matter to committee. Is that the only copy of the plans you have? 
Uh, no, I have seven full packages. Okay. Can yep. we have that? Are yes. they, what date are they? Uh, they're dated today, the today. 21st. Yep. Okay. Let's have those. Maybe not the full seven set because this is the effect of the change. Oh, so. sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's take this man to committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Ms. Mikhail? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I'd like to move a recommendation to approve this, uh, this application. I'd like to make a note that there's no objection from the uh, public and uh, that staff is now in accordance with all of the variants submitted before us as amended. Um, I find that this is a, um, a development good for the development of the land and um, fits well within the neighborhood and, and is um, follows the general intent of the official plan as well as the um, the zoning bylaw. Um, I will um, make a recommendation to approve the application with the following conditions that. Um, the uh, building is in accordance with the plans as submitted today, uh, November the 21st, right? Yes. Of 2017, and that uh, uh, the second condition uh, be um, that the approval will expire within two years if uh, development has not proceeded and or building permit not issued. Okay, thank you. Is there a discussion recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? Just to be clear, this is a revised application that's a 9.79 uh, height of variance for variance number six. Okay. So your application has been approved as revised. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll proceed with application CABA 196 2017 at 606 Lakeshore Road West. Hello, my name is Ted Van Langfeld. I live at 110 Goldcrest Road, Brampton, Ontario, L6S1H4, and the owner is Mohammed Alam. Okay, is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA 196 2017 at 606 Lakeshore Road West? See none. Members, uh, you've done your site visit, read the staff report, uh, which seems to support the variances. Uh, is there any items of clarification, any items you wish to pursue with the agent? Don't believe we have any written written uh, correspondence on this one. No one's here to speak to the item. Is there anything you wish to add to the application? Uh, no, sir. Okay, we'll take this matter to committee then, and we'll move a recommendation. Who would like to move a recommendation? Uh, you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, having... Uh, conducted my site visit and uh, read the staff report. I'm in agreement with the town on that. Uh, I note that, uh, as you had mentioned, that there's no written or oral objections from the public. In fact, there are no comments at all in support or uh, in opposition. I find that this particular uh, application does meet all four tests under the Planning Act. I'm going to make a recommendation that it be approved, subject to the, uh, the condition that... Uh, I'm just looking here... Da -da -da. There's no specific condition. Subject to the condition that the approval will expire two years from the date of, of this decision if the proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued, and subject to the condition that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the drawings as submitted. Okay, thank you for that. And discussion on the recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support subject to the condition? Sir, your application being approved. Everyone's in support uh, for the Secretary thank you, Treasurer. Sir. Okay. Um, just hang on. I know you're here for, uh, for uh, 1198 Cynthia Lane. So we just have one more to go, and then we'll come to you. So let's just uh, roll with the agenda. So we have uh, CAVA 161-2017 uh, at 2450 Meadowood Crescent. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Rob Nicolucci. I'm with RN Design. I'm the architect that's been retained, uh, and the applicant is uh, are with us as well, the, the Tom and Mara Turek. I have Steve Lucari from my office as well. Um, thank you for seeing us and hearing us this evening. I have a list of things. So this has a bit of a history, so um, bear with me. We started design on this house um, about a year and a half ago. 
And back in, March, uh, in June or January, excuse me, of uh, this year, we reached out to the town to look for precedents for variances in, uh, of the neighborhood in the, in the area. Um, in such, we got in contact, I guess, with, uh, with Kate, uh, the, the planner, who we sent a pro our first proposal in by uh, email. The response was back promptly, which was great. And we were a bit aggressive on the first go around. So we took it upon ourselves with the advice from the planning department to reduce that. Uh, some of our variances, we had five variances when we started off. We did a submission on, <coughs> excuse me, first one uh, was February 6th. We went to March 16th. The response was March 7th. March 20th, we met with Kate to go over all the comments, uh, agreed at then that time that we should be reducing some of our requests, which we have, uh, which we did at the time. We emailed the response back on uh, March the 30th and responded back by uh, April the 4th um, with additional challenges. We went through that as well and saw some merit in this. And again, what we're trying to do at this point is work in good faith with the planning department to ensure that the application, once it comes to this chambers, it is um, hopefully approvable. Um, at that point, we, re we received some additional comments. So we had a meeting on May 19th. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I have something in my throat. Uh, in, um, we, sorry, we set up a meeting for June 5th. In that meeting, we met with, um, with Kate, with Christina, and Dwight from Urban Design, went through the, the, the application and the proposal once again. Again, we still had five variances, and they were reduced uh, in the request of the variances. In that meeting, we agreed that we would reduce the variances. We would re reduce the building height, and we reduced the coverage to comply. So what ended up happening is we went from five variances to three variances. We kept reducing the GFA of the house to something reasonable. The comment that kept coming back that um, we didn't know how to respond to was that in numerous emails, it comes out as saying that we're not fitting the character of the neighborhood. And what we're confused about was that the house itself is designed in the same nature as other houses within the Oakville neighborhood, not on this particular street, but in the Oakville neighborhood. And in the um, comment that came back that if we were building the second floor within the roof line, reduce the appearance of a full two story, it may be more acceptable. That was on April the 4th. On May the 16th, the same type of comment came back and saying that we, um, if we were to build the second floor within the roof, it would be more acceptable. On May 25th, uh, similar comments came back, and then we were talked about that we don't comply, or to, sorry, to meet the proposal, the criteria of 11.1.9 of the official plan. So we took 11.1.9 of the official plan and started reading it and dissecting it and seeing how our application was related to that. Steve's going to actually give you a little bit more detail on that because he's more versed on it. Um, we then, sorry, what's the date? On June 9th or in August, what we decided, we had our final meeting with the town, with the planning department. In that meeting, it was, we asked for if this, the, the variances that we were looking for, the reduction that we, we've complied with over the course of the six months of process, if that was to be acceptable. It was stated in that meeting that she would take it back and speak with her uh, uh, superior and I think it's Gabe, well, he spoke with her director and they said this has merit to bring to the Committee of Adjustment, which we submitted for in September, I guess September, for the September 5th hearing. So out of that, what happened was we, uh, we submitted with the understanding that we had worked out a, a compromise that was acceptable because that's what we were uh, instructed or I guess not instructed, what we were told at the time. It turns out that there was a, a non-favorable response from the planning department, but we didn't hear about it. Actually, we read about it in the application that was uh, in the file that came out on the 9th of the Friday before the long weekend, which was the, the Tuesday night was the, the uh, committee of adjustment. So we had to react. We put phone calls in to find out what was going on, and it still is not acceptable. So we then read... Um, We read today's notice, or the notice about today about the application. It says that we do not satisfy the four 
uh, areas of the um, the Planning Act to to com uh, for committee of adjustment. We went through all four of these as well, and we're not sure we understand that either, because we are minor in nature. We're here standing in front of you. We have an appropriate development. It is a house on a ho on a housing lot. Uh, the, the official plan we will speak to, and the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. We're just asking for some minor variances. So we're not sure how we don't comply to that. The landowner, Tom and his wife, took it upon themselves to speak with every one of their neighbors. So there are 21 lots on the street. There is nine of them that have been redeveloped, uh, 11 left to go. We did one across the street. Tom went to every one of his neighbors and got a letter, showed him and explained the application to each one of them. And I believe in your package, you have 20, uh, 18 letters of support, all from the neighbors on that street. We also kept hearing about maintaining the character of the neighborhood. So again, in trying to understand this, we brought up some points. This is, whoops, I'm gonna do this the other way. This is the house in question. This is the house across the street. Our house is 51 feet wide. The house across the street is 74 feet wide. The variances that were granted on 2641 Meadowood were not as much as in the GFA, but height was, was, was given, garage was given, okay? And this house, if anything on that street, is the widest lot on the street. And this house actually, from a character point of view, may be more questionable than ours. The 70, the, the, this one fits in on a, the standard size lot. We have increased side yard setbacks. In, in, in all our negotiations, the house did get smaller, so we've increased our side yard setbacks. So in the context of the street of the 21 lots, we believe that this fits in. And we'll explain from this, uh, the, uh, the official plans perspective how that looks for us. So you may have come, came in late, but you have five minutes for your presentation and you've blown two minutes past that, so. I'm already into seven minutes? Yes. Wow, but, I went too fast. Yeah, no, that, that's okay. We'll give you a bit more time because I know you got lots on your mind there, but. Thank you, uh, so we'll, we'll try and make this really quick. Yeah, no, just finish what you were doing and then we'll, if you're, you know. Go for it, okay, real quick on the site. Yep. I, I don't, don't want, I want to make sure you get everything that you wanted to say in. I appreciate that. Thank you. So within um, within the design the design guidelines for sure we need your name. Oh, uh, sorry, it's Steve Fucari from R okay. Design. Same address. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so in the livable uh, urban design manual for Oakville uh, design guidelines for stable residential communities, um, there are sections that guide you through. Um, yeah, there you go. There you go. Is that better? The sections that guide you through uh, what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. Um, within the guidelines, it refers to that dwellings may be designed to reflect any architectural style. Um, it also speaks to the new development with full second story. Uh, uh, full second story is encouraged to incorporate facade articulation and different materials on the upper floor. Um, regarding the massing, there is a bunch of points in 321 of this document that says new development, which is larger than the overall massing of the adjacent dwelling, should be designed and, and reduce building massing forms through thoughtful composition, smaller elements, so on and so forth. So we feel that we've gone through and, and address all of these in the design. Um, a few examples are uh, single level building elements, um, which we've incorporated multiple multiple different uh, um, soffit heights, uh, overall massing heights. Um, this can be seen with this site plan where the yellow is representative of one story uh, massing and the adjacent uh, properties are one story houses. Um, to be uh, in context with these houses, we have incorporated one-story elements in the front areas of this design um, in order to be compassionate to those adjacent neighbors that have yet to redevelop and have um, soffit heights that are compatible with, with uh, those areas. 
Um, lowering the height of the dwelling is another point. We've kept very, very low roof pitches. We're within the building uh, roof height, uh, building height requirements. Um, to vary uh, subdividing the larger building mass into smaller elements. Uh, again, with our, with our elevation that we've proposed, we have multiple different areas of, of um, elements, so it, it does not appear monolithic uh, in nature. Uh, we've stepped the second floor back, so it is not in your face on the streetscape, uh, like a full two-story right at the front yard setback that we've proposed. Uh, it refers to in the guidelines to vary building materials and colors and add horizontal detailing to de-emphasize the massing. And, and we feel that we've done that with having different materials going horizontally across the, the soffit and roof lines on the ground floor that all fall within the uh, guidelines that are in the document. Okay. I know that we've run on a little bit long, so I apologize for that. Um, at the end of this, I guess what I'll say is that what we've tried to do is work in conjunction with the planning department to create an application that we thought was approvable. Uh, we thought we were there, and we keep getting, um, I guess, negative response to th certain things. It does appear to us that there seems to be an issue with the massing of the house being two-story in an area that seems to be more one-and-a-half-story, but we're not really sure. So I would like to leave it with committee, obviously, and I appreciate your patience on my uh, length of our discussion. And, um, yeah, I think I'm done. So can, can you just... Uh uh, wh which variances did you drop from? We the dropped the building height variance. You dropped height, and we built dropped coverage. The height. two that would be directly impacting the character of the house and impact of the house on the neighborhood. And did you change the uh, the the building topology? Did you change the building form at all? Well, we had to reduce the size of the envelope to reduce the coverage, and we reduced the height of the roof to get to make it to, and I dropped the the house uh, with some grading, with with help with the engineer to ensure that we fell within the height requirement. So I'm just trying to, uh, and I'll ask uh, Ms. Kalovich, I'm just trying to see, there's a common staff report, there's no revisions have been proposed, and I'm just trying to figure out what From is. our first submission in uh, September to the Committee of Adjustment to today, there have been none revised. Uh, in September, we had, again, we, in August, we had the understanding that we, were in, we, had, a, we had enough merit to submit to committee. When we did, uh, we okay. got the negative staff report. At that point, we started to have additional discussion, okay. and then we decided to move forward with the original application. And then, do you have your site plan? Just put it up there. Show me where the setback would be, that one. I'm, I'm just sorry, curious to one? know where, point to approximately where a 13.87 meter setback would be if you had to comply There's with it. It's going to be 13.8, it's hard to, this is a guess. No, no. So well, that, you're, you're, that, you're, you show existing, it there at 8.55. That's, 8 that's, 5. 5. that's the existing envelope, so the and existing so it would be a meter in front right of here. that. So it would be right about there. So, so in, in context with that, this lot, when it was originally built on and when I, the street I, I was can't hear you, I'm sorry. Sorry, when this, when this lot was originally constructed many years ago, there was a cul-de-sac at the end of this. Right. So the house that was built there was built um, abnormally further back than the existing context of the street right now. Right. It was extended at some point, you know, several decades ago to extend further towards Applewood Park. Um, and at the time that the existing dwelling was built, there was a cul-de-sac on this lot. So, so the two this, lots this on arcing line right here right, is okay, representative yes. of the old cul-de-sac that was there and in place I see. 40, 50 years ago. So that explains, so the existing setback was 13 or 14.87 uh, because of the cul-de-sac. Correct. And, um, and the house two uh, on either side were built after the cul-de-sac was eliminated? Or the one, the one on, my, on our left was probably there. The on one on the left? right uh, got built after the cul-de-sac was uh, eliminated and it was brought closer to the front. Well, the just street. by the, if you look at the, t the, the, sorry, this line here is the cul-de-sac. So this lot would not be impacted by it. Right, it would be the other one. I'm just trying to yeah, get the this, number. This one. Um, uh, 2446. 2446 was constructed after the cul-de-sac was eliminated and the road was no, put No, 2446, this one here, would have been built uh, at the same time because the cul-de-sac right. would not impact that one. The oh, yes, 24, okay, that's right. Yeah. 2450, 2454 yes. uh, appears to have been built after the fact because it's, quite, it's much closer. Okay. So, uh, yes. Yeah. 
That's what it appears. All right. Okay, Both I houses just, are quite old. Okay, I just wanted to understand that yes. history. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, geez. <laughs> We've got questions. Who was first? Or you're pulling seniority, are you? Should be <coughs> your left hand. Yeah. So what I heard you say is for at least a year, staff repeatedly came back to you and said other houses on the street oversized houses on the street that got variances to permit them to be larger um, helped to mitigate by building the second floor into the roof line. Mm -hmm. Why is it for over a year you were not able to amend, adjust your design to do that um, and be consistent with the other variances and the designs on the street? Uh, it's not that we weren't able to do that. The The dream home of our client was not to have a house with a sloped roof. It was more to do this, what we call prairie contemporary style, which is prevalent in different neighborhoods in Oakville. So they've seen it. They love it. They love the elevation. What we tried to do instead of actually putting the roof line in was to set the second floor far enough back to reduce the impact on the street, similar to what a roof line would do, but still having front windows. So it's the architectural style that they're in love with, and based on the guidelines and everything else we've read, okay, the two-story houses are permissible. So we've been trying to work with that and reduce our GFA and reduce all the other variances to allow for it. So it's not that we weren't able to. That's just not their dream. That's a fair answer. Uh, any further questions? Okay. Is there anyone here, just before you go, is there anyone here that has an interest in application CAV? A 161-2017 at 2450 Meadowood Crescent. Okay, is there anything you wish to f add further to the application? I think I've talked enough okay. at this point. <laughs> All right, so no one else is here to talk to the matter. We'll take it into committee and we'll issue a decision shortly. Who would like to move a recommendation, members? So we do have all the letters of support here for the various form letters that were signed by 18 out of the 21 residences on the street. Members who would like to move a recommendation? Just need a minute to reflect here. I think of course. we have a lot of information to process on a very short period of time. Can someone move a recommendation? We'll have start the discussion and see where this application. Uh Mr. Teleski, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, when I went out and looked at the site, I was uh, actually surprised to find when I came back and read the staff report afterwards that my reaction and staff's report were almost identical. Uh, there's some larger houses on that street. They've uh, mitigated that massing by um, trying to incorporate it and reduce the impact of the dwelling. Um, an additional approximately 450, 500 square feet um, with complete two-story um, house. Um, I, I just, I agree with staff. I don't find that that's uh, desirable. Um, uh, the other two variances, I, I do not have an, an issue with. The garage size um, is typical for the type of variance we see for uh, two doors facing the street, the front yard setback, although it sits in front of the houses on either side, I can see that it's done that way. So when it will comply with the houses on either side based on the current zoning, if they redevelop and have that one meter leeway. But uh, Mr. Chair, I cannot support uh, the variance for the increased floor area given the um, design of the building which I don't find to be in character with the rest of the street 
I will note uh, that the applicant did a very impressive job in getting support from their neighbors. Um, but uh, having said that, Mr. Chair, um, they did not get the support of staff um, and they have not gotten my support, so I would recommend denial. Thank you. Discussion recommendation? Okay, the, uh, the request is to deny the application. All those in support? Those opposed? Okay, so uh, that motion fails. Who would like to put forward a motion, an alternative motion? Well, it has to be Mr. Charlevoix or Mr. McHale. <laughs> there you go. Mr. Chairman, while I uh, respect the uh, comments of staff as well as uh, my colleague, um, I feel that um, although this this house design is is not uh, atypical, um, I do believe that um, it's it's done a good job to give the applicant what they desire in terms of a f house form, uh, as well as fit in within the neighborhood and. The indicative of that is the support um, of all the neighbors in the neighborhood. Um, having said that, um, I find that the requests before us are minor and uh, that they do meet the intent of the um, official plan as well as the um, zoning bylaw. Uh, they, um, um, I will move a recommendation to approve the uh, application with um, the regular stipulated uh, condition that um, develop, uh, that it, our decision would expire within two years if the development has not proceeded and or a building permit not um, received, as well as a condition that the um, um, construction, yes, uh, yes. That's a really good question. Last date on the plan is June, what does that say? June 30th. Sir, I can't see that small. June 30th. This is the design sketch, yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I I too was uh, completely torn by this one, I have, to, I have to admit. When I did go out to the site and uh, I looked at the neighborhood that was here, uh, it was clear to me that, the, that uh, if not all, uh, I'm pretty certain it was all of the other homes uh, had been constructed in such a way that, uh, uh, that it, the second floor had been built into the roof line. So I was tending to lean towards the, uh, the town in this particular th um, uh, situation and now what I've got here is I've, 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 you know I have to take everything into account so in this particular case I, I've uh, I find myself swayed by the fact that uh, of a, a few things which I think I, I need to make clear uh, one is that the town actually didn't have any real problem with uh, the variances with respect to the garage and, and the minimum front yard um, their comment was specifically, or not specifically, but generally related to the design of, of, the, uh, of the building. Um, I also was swayed by the fact that, uh, that the neighbor had gone out and spoken to uh, everyone on the street and actually came back with 18 letters. It is a small street and it is a unique street, so I, I swayed by that. And as a, as a member of this committee adjustment, I, I appreciate the need for, for good design. I understand the town's policies and all that, and, and I, I, you know, my attempt is to encourage it. Um, but I find that sometimes good design is just in the eyes of the beholder, and I don't find the issue, that issue enough uh, persuasive. I was torn a little bit because of the sheer size. I would have been a lot more comfortable if the actual R RFA was smaller. But at the end of the day, taking into account the large homes that were in the area and what was going on in that particular area, I find myself uh, coming out in support of my colleague's motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the recommendation is support subject to the two conditions you heard earlier. All those in support? Those opposed? 
Okay, two opposed. As you see, your application being approved, sir, subject to those two conditions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Wonderful evening. Okay, so we'll deal with the application we're holding. This is application uh, CAV A192-2017 at 1198 Cynthia Lane. Uh, good evening, Chair. I have my apologies for being late. That's fine. We um, didn't delay us. Uh, my client has, oh, my name is Peter Del Grosso. I'm the architect uh, for the uh, project. Your address? Uh, 67 Elmbrook Crescent, Etobicoke. Okay. M9C, uh, 5C7, just yes. to confirm. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, my applicant has purchased uh, this property uh, uh, in combination with a, a plan that was already designed with the, um, with the um, uh, coverage and height and what I'm, I'm requesting here. Um, is, upon, this, is this a redo of the 2015 application? In yes, effect? yes. What I did is I reviewed the drawing um, uh, prior to, uh, while it was in for permit, and I noticed that the second floor didn't actually work. Um, some of the rooms, uh, washroom, didn't have the proper headroom. Um, the, some of the roof was running through the middle of windows. So to accommodate and fix uh, the, the issues with the second floor to make it work, um, we had to adjust some of the roof lines. Uh, upon uh, adjusting some of the roof lines, uh, the elevation doesn't look the same as what was uh, already approved. Uh, but did you stay within the approved variance? As Everything's exactly the same. Same footprint, same building height, same everything. The only thing that we changed was the Elevations. roof line. A little bit on the elevation. Um, I've worked with planning uh, to try to uh, accommodate some of the roof lines, trying to make it as a one story, but without ruining the, the space, um, the sa same square footage that was approved, uh, um, the same footprint that has been approved. Uh, it was just a roof line that we, uh, we modified. And that's all we're just asking for is just that roof line. Uh, I don't know if you have the... Um, no, can you show us, do you have the original roof line? Uh, the original just show us, one. Just show us uh, what I have was a rendering that what it, what it yeah. was before, right? Just curious because I can't remember everything. So this is the this is the this is the uh, this is what it looked like before. That's what was approved in twenty. This is what was approved, and if you look at the window that's here, well, that roof that window is half in the roof, so we would have to eliminate that window there, and that window is a washroom. So, so that washroom height is, is at that level that's here. So I don't know how someone's going to be able to use. We lost, a, we'd lose out on a, an ensuite that is part of the one of the uh, uh, bedrooms. So to uh, to make sure that we have the space, right? So what what I've done is I've created a, a new elevation. So that is my, uh, my elevation where I tried to lower this side over the garage so it's not as high as a two story, it's more of a one and a half story and I've sloped the other side so whatever is facing the street gives you that same look as what was there before. So this allows us to have the same, it's the same second floor, nothing, nothing else has changed. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, uh, any questions? Do you mind putting that sketch? The second one? To the first one? Can you put them, yeah, so. The roof height that you were looking for was to the top of that. Yes. Um, and now the roof height is to the top of that at the back. Okay. The and I, and I know so the roof in the front is even lower. Yeah. So I, I note that your the floor area and the roof height are, you know, essentially the same. The math is just slightly different. Yes. And you've just, you've actually lowered your coverage just a little bit. Yes. Because what I've done is at the 
I don't know if you can see it here, but at the front here, there's a, there was a bay window yeah. that added to coverage. So I what see. I've done is I've eliminated it here. So okay. it doesn't, it reduces the coverage. So I still have the same square footage as living space, yeah. but I don't have the coverage. You I reduced the coverage. the coverage. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? See not. Anyone here to speak to matter uh, at uh, 1198 Cynthia Lane? Uh, CAVA 192 2017. Okay, see none. If there's nothing else here, we'll take this matter to committee. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, members, who would like to move a recommendation on this last application today? <sighs> Mr. Charlebois, thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, having visited the site and uh, and read not only this staff report, uh, but the staff report from November 2015, uh, as well as listen to the presentation that's here. And I do note that there's, uh, there's uh, no one from the public uh, here commenting either um, uh, in objection or in support. Um, I, I have to admit, I, I was a slightly confused because I, I do note that in November 2015 that the town had recommended approval of this particular site the this committee here had uh, had also approved it um, I do see again the, the the changes that were made here um, uh, but I find that the particular changes that were that were done although again it's almost like the previous one it's a, it's a question of design I find that the applicant uh, stayed within I believe the intent of, of what uh, this committee uh, and uh, and the town have been looking at. Um, the town uh, has chosen in this particular case to uh, to rethink its position, uh, which is as it's right. Um, I'm, however, going to put forward a motion to approve this uh, particular application, finding it does meet all four tests in the Planning Act. Uh, making it subject to the condition that the approval will expire two years from the date of this decision that the proposed development does not proceed or a building permit is not issued, and making it subject further to the condition the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the drawings as submitted this evening. What are the date of your drawing, sir? Um, I note that the, the first drawing here says January 24th, 2017. Right. So as submitted with the application. That's April the last 4th, one that's been 2017. Yes. So you're satisfied to say as submitted with the application? I, I'm, I'm okay with that. There's different dates on every drawing. All right, okay. All right, discussion on recommendation? Mr. Tulowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, maybe this is a situation of it's better to be consistent than right for me tonight, <laughs> but uh, Mr. Chair, we this committee approved a significant uh, minor variance for a significant increase in floor space for a housing design that uh, that same theme incorporated the second floor into the roof. What's being brought back to the committee is essentially the same variances with the uh, addition of a significant number of new vertical second story walls facing the street and uh, I cannot support the size of that variance with the design that's being presented. It's uh, completely different than what we were presented with previously, so I won't be supporting this motion. Okay, any further discussion? See none. Okay, the recommendation is to approve subject to those two conditions. All those in support? Those opposed? Okay, your application has been approved, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, good evening. We have uh, minutes of November 7, 2017. We we're all here. Who would like to move the minutes? Ms. Mikhail? Okay. Discussion on the minutes? See none. All those in support? Okay, those minutes have been approved. And adjournment. Ms. Mikhail? Okay. All those in support of the adjournment? Okay, adjourn at 8 o'clock. That's fine. You can stay here. <laughs> <laughs>